Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be differentiating Lambert's W function. So in a previous video, I had integrated this function. So this function has some interesting properties. We'll talk about that. And in this video, we're going to be differentiating it. So Lambert's W function can be defined in many different ways, one of which is the inverse function for x times e to the power x. So if you have f of x equals x e to the x, then it's inverse. Of course, this is a multi-valued function, by the way, you'll see the graph in a little bit, can be defined as Wolfram, uh, I mean, not Wolfram, Lambert's w function. Okay, in other words, Lambert's w function takes x e to the x as input and returns x as an output. So whenever you see something like x times e to the x or t times e to the t, t is our thing, by the way, it can be whatever, anything, then when you apply Lambert's w to this, the output is going to be t. Of course, depending on the branch of the Lambert's w function, uh, you get different values. Uh, we're talking about real values here, uh, but we're going to differentiate it in the general way. And I'll be presenting two methods, but before, before we start that, I want to show you what the graph of it looks like. So here's the graph of Lambert's W function. By the way, you can graph this in Desmos just by graphing x equals y e to the y. Because normally, if you graph y equals x e to the x, that would be f, and you're now graphing f inverse. Make sense? And of course, there's a breaking point which is very important, uh, which is at x equals negative 1 over e, and obviously by differentiating you can get that point. But notice that at that point our function is kind of split into two pieces. So what happens is if you draw a vertical line at x equals negative 1 over e, you're going to notice that it's actually tangent to this graph. So any x value between negative 1 over e and 0 is going to intersect this graph twice, which will give you more than one value. All right. Anyways, just briefly, I wanted to talk about Lambert's W function and its graph. And now we're going to go ahead and differentiate it. Now, I think this problem is pretty interesting because we're actually going to differentiate Lambert's W function without knowing exactly what it is equal to. Because, you know, for functions like sine x, we know if we have sine x and we can differentiate it, its derivative is going to be cosine x, right? We know explicitly what this function is. But in the case of Lambert's W function, we don't. But we at least have a definition which we can use. So let's start with the first method. Now, remember, Lambert's W function was defined as the inverse function. So this is going to be a helpful uh, way to think about it. But also there is other identities. For example, this is one of them, Lambert's W of x times e to the power W of x is also going to equal x. Now think about why this would work and please write down your thoughts in the comment section double hope so hopefully someone can help if uh, this is not clear to you anyway so i'm going to start with this identity and differentiate both sides using the product rule so how do you use the product rule if you have like a u times v as suppose u and v are functions of x and to differentiate it you're going to do u prime times v plus v prime times u. So you're going to differentiate one of these, multiply by the other, and then differentiate the second one and multiply by the first one. Make sense? So we, without knowing what it is, I'm just going to write this as the derivative of w, which is what we're trying to find, by the way. Multiply by the second function, which is e to the power w, plus the derivative of the second one. Now, be going to be careful. If you're differentiating e to the power something, we're going to use the chain rule. So the same thing multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is defined as the derivative of the exponent. And of course, that will be w prime again, right? So the, the derivative of uh, Lambert's w function pops up when you're trying to differentiate a product, obviously. And from here, we're going to try to extract what it is. And it's going to be fun. Okay, so this is the product rule equals, what's the derivative of x? Hmm, that's a good question. It should be 1, if it's with respect to x, of course. So you're talking about the x over dx and algebraic or however you want to look at it, this is going to be one. Okay, so now what do we do with this? Easy, just factor out the Lambert's W function prime or W prime. And then you're going to be getting, wait a minute, I think we messed up here. Hold on a sec. Okay, let's check. So we were trying to differentiate it. We just differentiate this one. And then I'm supposed to multiply it by 
the first function, which is now uh, numbers w, and that's equal to 1. Now, here we go. Now, notice that in this case, we have a common factor, Lambert's w, or w prime times e to the w. I don't want to take out both. I just want to take out uh, w prime for obvious reasons, because that's what, what I want to um, find, right? So here, this is going to give me e to the power wx plus e to the power wx times wx. Make sense? So I took out the derivative of numbers w, and now I'm going to solve for it. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by the expression inside the parentheses, and that gives us 1 over e to the wx plus e to the wx times wx. Make sense? So far we got the answer, but we're not going to settle with this. We're going to simplify this further. And to simplify it, we're going to use the identity that we started with, which is kind of interesting, right? That identity gives us x, so this part actually equals x. Okay, so our expression even got simpler. W prime is equal to 1 over e to the w plus x. And it's fairly simple, isn't it? So that will be the answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think it's going to be more interesting, but you'll get to decide. So with the second method, I'm going to start with the original identity, which is w x e to the x equals x. This time I'm not using the identity I used before. And then we're going to differentiate both sides, but this time it's going to be implicit differentiation. What does that mean? Well, it's kind of like, or should I say, uh, composition function, because this is a function of x and we're composing with another function. Anyways, no matter how you look at it, let's differentiate both sides. That's going to be by the chain rule w prime x e to the x times the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of x e to the x, which is by product rule, the derivative of x times e to the x plus the derivative of e to the x times x. You get the idea, hopefully. And of course, this is equal to 1 again. So now, I know this kind of looks like the first method, but notice we started with a different identity this time, right? And we're going to do something else. We're going to call this expression t because I want to get the derivative of the function and inside I don't really want anything composed with another function I want w prime something a single variable that's why I want to switch to t here be careful so we're setting x e to the x equal to t and this has some implications right if you w both sides w x e to the x is going to be w t from here x is going to equal w t because by definition w or Lambert's w of x e to the x is equal to x. By definition, that's hopefully you already know that, right? Great. So now we got the following. First of all, we have this expression right here. We're going to go ahead and isolate it. First, let me write w prime x e to the x equals 1 over. Now I'm going to go ahead and factor out an e to the x here. That's going to give me 1 plus x. So here's what I need to do. We call this t, so this is going to be a t here. And e to the x, what is e to the x? What is x? x is going to be w of t. Make sense? So I'm going to replace x with w of t, and of course the same here. So w prime of t is going to be 1 over e to the w t multiplied by 1 plus w of t. Now, does this look like the first answer? Let's take a look. Well, it kind of does, but with a different variable, but it doesn't matter. You can definitely replace, wait a minute, it's not the same thing, of course, because we still have to convert it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and distribute, because in this case, uh, distributing allows us to simplify it. So we're going to get e to w t times w t, which is going to turn into t by definition. Remember the first identity we used. So w prime of t is going to be 1 over e to the w t plus t. But of course, you want to stick to x, right? So let's go ahead and write this in terms of x. So it replace all the t's with x. That's perfectly fine. And then this is going to be e to the w x plus x. So that's the derivative of Lambert's w function. And of course, it contains itself. And go ahead and check out the video that I made about integrating Lambert's w. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.